So I thought it might be kind of fun to do something just a little bit different today. Anybody want to go on a field trip? Let's go. Hunter, Duchess. All right, this is going to be pretty cool. I'm excited to show you guys. You're going to love this. We are headed to Hardwood Industries in Sherwood, Oregon to meet up with another Nick and get the tour of their over two acre facility. And it has the coolest, most state of the art, futuristic way we will buy lumber. And you have never seen anything like it. You're gonna love it and I'm excited to show you. All right, I hope you enjoy. I should probably watch the road. Let's get on to Sherwood. Just a heads up, this place is really noisy and I'm gonna do my best. So thanks for your understanding with the audio. Welcome everybody, we are at Hardwood Industries here in Sherwood, Oregon. I've got Nick with me. He's gonna show us the tour through this uh, tens of thousands of square foot facility. I asked a lot of you guys and you wanted to see the multi-million dollar lumber resorting machine that was custom built for this place. So let's get going on this tour. Come with us and we'll show you through this amazing facility. That was good. Let's start at the planer side. So okay. we brought in the rough lumber and I think what's really special about this side of your specialty, Hardwood Industries, is rough lumber is really hard to sort through. There's a lot of different variation in okay. a single grade. Number one common, number two common. So we've started with a rough bunk. It's brought in by truck. And what does this side of the uh, station do? All right, so this is the start of our uh, grading chain. So we got the uh, surface machine here. So instead of grading in the rough, we like to grade from the surface so we can actually see what the board looks like. Most places like to grade from the best face in the rough. We Makes like sense. to grade from the worst face after it's been surfaced so we can really see what's in the board, what kind of defects are there and are not. After it goes through the surfacing machine, we'll go into the chain and then to the grader, we will uh, take a look at it, select a better grade. Most lumber, I mean, that's a wide width. Sure. We can grade that into nine, maybe 10 grades out of just selecting better. So if you have a very specific need, we can get you that board. We can get you the width, we can get you the length. So you're not searching through a big bundle of wood trying to find that one board that you need for a certain project. We can get it to you right away. Oh, that's interesting. So I've bought a lot of hit and miss uh, lumber. It is hard to see what that yeah. grain's gonna look like. I know a lot of people will bring a little block plane in to see yeah. uh, past the roughage. That's really cool that you're bringing it down to something you can actually see. I'll throw up on screen here all of the different subgrades. You guys are kind of proprietary and breaking down these different subgrades uh, and selection. Uh, there's quite a few of them. The one that I buy most often is Superior HI. Typically yep. gives me pretty clear, clean grain. That, uh, that's our best value grade. Awesome. It's kind of our, our high mid grade. Um, you can go up or down from there. Um, you want to spend more, you want that perfect veneer board, you can do that. If you've got a more rustic appearance, you'll pay less and you can get those rustic boards and you'll pay below what, you know, the normal like sub HI. Uh, one thing I did want to point out, you mentioned Walnut before. Walnut has its own special grade grading rules in the NHLA. So they allow shorter bores, narrower bores, more knots and stuff. Just because of the way walnut uh, grows in the wild. Interesting. Like, yeah. Let's go discuss that in a little more depth over on the other side of this where all the magic happens. Oh yeah. All right, so this is where it all starts. We've got this raw, uncut lumber. For me, there's a lot of steps on my end that take this to a finished piece of furniture. Oh, yeah. I don't have a ton of employees. Can you design furniture for me? No. So I didn't think you could, but I would love to tell you a little bit about Fiverr. Fiverr is what I use to uh, subcontract out freelancers. I can give them a pencil drawing and they can create a step-by-step -step plan for how to bring something from this raw lumber to life. Huh? There's really one of me and only 24 hours in a day. So when I need help, I go to Fiverr. I've used freelancers for everything from 3D modeling to video editing, even web design. And they've helped bring projects like the valet boxes you saw in the last video to life. Those are cool, by the way. Thanks. <laughs> For that project, uh, John, my Fiverr freelancer, took all of my designs. I didn't have him model it, but what I had him do is create detailed step-by-step -step plans, which I'll throw down below so you can check those out if you'd like. It's fast and simple. You can check portfolios, reviews, even have a consultation before getting started. They make the whole process super easy. 
So whether you need a little help with the technical stuff or you need just a couple more hours in the day, I recommend checking out Fiverr for hiring all of your freelance needs. You can get a 10% off your first freelance gig using the code Sawyer Design at Fiverr.co slash Sawyer Design. That's code Sawyer Design at Fiverr.co using the link below. Thanks Fiverr for the extra hand when I need it and for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to this tour. Plus. All right, so we were just over here on the other side of this little booth. That is where the rough lumber comes in and you run it through the planer. You got it. This thing is absolutely amazing. So we put it on a conveyor belt. What happens after that? After that, our NHLA train graders will sort the lumber, grade it, flip it over, see what grade it's, what grade it's gonna make. And then it will go into the chain where it will be computerized scan so we know exactly how much board feet is in that stick of lumber. Let me hold you up there. Yeah. You say a grader is grading. This yeah. is this lumber's already graded. So are they picking through it one by one? Are they using a camera? Like how does this work? Normally they pick through it one by one. They sit there and they will flip the board and make sure it makes the grade that it's supposed to be. That's one of the things we do is that when we get a grade of lumber from a mill, we check it. So we know what mills have the best lumber. We know what mills tell us exactly how much board feet is in that pack of lumber they sent us. So then our grader goes through and checks it, and then he will sort it into our own proprietary grades. And then it goes into the sorting machine here. So after he sets the grade and tells the machine what grade it is, it goes into the, uh, the bin sorter. And the bin sorter will take those SKUs and uh, sort them into the different SKUs that we have. I think there's 10 different bins here, and I'll go through the machine, sort them. It'll stack them into the specific units that we're looking for, come down here, and I'll go through an automatic a strapping machine so that we have a lot less hands touching the lumber and everything comes out ready to be packaged, ready for our customer. Interesting. Right so it's going to size it up, size it up, link, figure out width. the board footage to the tenth of a board foot. And then you've got some guy with little buttons and he's like, we have shoot a big A, B, C. servers in here that, okay. that know the SKUs and know which bin to put it in in the machine. So the SKUs are yeah. read by a camera. Good question. Are they kind of like a barcode? Not exactly. Okay. But when we tell the machine what skew it is, it knows where to put it. So it's automatic, ready to go. Can we look in this booth and kind of see any of that? Or is it sort of behind the scene? We might be able to take a peek. Let me take a peek. Yeah, let's see if we can. Yeah, let's check it out. Oh, we just got the big, big box now. So this is basically the printer. So it knows which species to put on the board. We used to have a huge rack of servers sitting here. It's been a little more streamlined here, I see. But let's actually, I can take you up here. Okay. That right here, this is the, the print head. The what, what? This is the print head for every board that comes through, it gets printed oh. right down through this green machine part right here. So you don't have to stand in the back of my truck and measure okay. each board you and got it. estimate and do all of that math? Yep, this already done for you to the tenth of the board foot. By print head, you mean literally it prints how many board footage and what kind of wood it is on the board. You got it. Amazing. What kind of ink is that? Is that inkjet or laser jet? Inkjet. Sick. So yeah, here's where the grader stands. And this appears to be the uh, slide at the amusement park. This is grading station. The different grades he selects. It looks like a cabinet prime, cabinet HI. We were standing over on this side. This is the planer, right? We'll come down in through the infeed here, and this is where the grader stands and checks every board. Oh, it's fed that it's way. It's fed this way. And it's fed this way into the conveyor. Gotcha. Got uh, so we got a chop saw here. So we have a board that, like, the end of it we don't like. Okay. We can rip it or chop it and put it back into the chain here and then have it regraded so that we can raise the grader. You can just take that bad part out so you don't have to count that as board footage. You got it. Got one of our graders here. Cool. Hey, Frank. I will. Damn will. it. This kind of looks like a sluice. Do we get gold out of here? <laughs> oh no, this is the regrade station where we can chop the board. So, or if you find oh, a board, you can shove it through and we'll we'll chop up there the chop saw and we'll regrade it. Interesting, why is this uh, jiggling? That's the, the waste so we can get it into our uh, chip system. Cool, if why not a conveyor? That seems like a high wear item. Does that break a lot? No, anyway. Uh, what are we grading today? Today. Talking to my chest. Oh. This is supposed to be one <laughs> common uh, rift wide oak. Typically, how many different grades do you see out of this bunk? Well, today I'm pulling uh, a color sort 
for light shades, pulling a color sort between the art and sap wood. I have a downgrade that's a two comic. Oh, okay. So if uh, one common gets into this bunk, you can toss that out and bring it down a grade also. Yes. How, how, what percentage would you say in a typical one common bunk uh, ends up being two common? It varies from wire to supplier, okay. species to species. It, it can go from next to nothing to a lot. The NHLA allows uh, 4% money value Very before you know, we can call a claim on it. Interesting, yeah. interesting. Is this all run by power or is this air or a little combination of both? Pneumatics? Uh, combination of both. Most of it's by power, but we do have uh, pneumatic heads that can uh, fix some of the logs and uh, keep everything level. You guys got his good side, right? <laughs> what kind of uh, maintenance, like how much oil, do you have to come through and grease everything? Is there zerts at every, like? Literally every moving object has a zerk, yeah. yeah. Uh, this fire, like, man, I couldn't even tell you. How long did it take you to grease this thing? Uh, a week. A week? They do sections at a time. Bob. Uh, I mean, shoot. Yeah. That's a lot. I was almost going to cuss, but I held back. It's a pretty badass machine. For sure. My dad had an excavation company and when uh, machines started to sound like this, uh, we were required to uh, stop. Do you see any tolerance change? Is stuff starting to get looser now that you guys have used this quite a bit? Yeah, they get loose, so that's what happens a lot of times. But like, I believe with tweaking, it's probably like a lot of these chains are, they're not, they just sort of sitting on there. They're not, oh, they're not sure. It's like gravity, it's like they're, weight, they're weighted down. Right? Yeah, they're not, they're not tension, they're yeah, yeah. Uh, gravity fit. So there's no dry lube or anything no, yet? No, no. Gotcha. The will never be lubed because of uh, the lumber that we run. Sure. If you lube it, they'll leave oil spots and yep. stuff like that. Yeah. That that that's sense. basically a finished product. Yeah. This thing is absolutely amazing. So who makes this? Dry firms. You come in, measure everything, know uh, exactly what we want to accomplish, and it's custom made for us. Wow. I hope that scale comes across on this. What does a machine like this custom made cost? Uh, it's not cheap. We've invested millions into our grading system here, and we are investing more here in the near future. We're gonna be adding a grade station so that we get more lumber into the bin sorter, so we get more lumber to our customers. Because it's running, uh, it's running uh, approximately you know, 50%, so if you get that second grader in there, we can up the capacity and uh, get more lumber through our uh, bin sorter system. Amazing. Uh, it's kind of hard to get a scale when we are in such a large area. Do you know what the, the footprint of this machine alone is? Uh, footprint? Uh, I don't. I don't have the opposite. A lot of feet. Many feet. All the feet. Yeah, if I, I, if I remember right, it's like about 150 feet from uh, end to end. From end, to end. Amazing. Everything is run through here. It drops down yep. into the uh, different sorters. It gets spit out over here and then drop down and rebunked as we go. Uh, yeah, we should definitely get some shots up here. This is cool to see the other end and how it comes through. Come on up. This is the catwalk they asked me not to be on, uh, especially with the camera. They are working here, which makes sense. So you can see the booth for the grading behind me. And as those are graded and marked, they're going to come up here and drop into separate sections based on their subgrade. And then this machine here is bringing it up. It's called the scrambler, where it's bringing up those subgrades bringing them up and shooting them over where somebody is here hand flipping everything to make sure all of the prints uh, are facing up so you could read it and it's rebunking everything right over here and we get all of these subgrade bunks based on the big rough bunks that come in. How cool is that? Man, if the back of one of my dad's machines looked like that, he, if anybody ran the counterweight of machine into a pile of dirt or something, put a scratch on the back, done. I don't think they have that policy here. 
we've sorted everything. So if I call you and I'm like, listen, I don't have time for this, but I got a return customer. I've got a nine foot oak table that I really can't handle in my 400 square foot shop. This machine, yeah, it can do a straight line on one edge and uh, rip to a specific, like if we're doing a three inch molding, we've got a three and a half inch board, right out of the machines, and it's straight in with the molding stuff. Is it clamping down pressure to get a straight line rip? How do you keep that? There, right. there, there's a roller in there that keeps pressure on the board as it's going through. To make top. sure it's not. Exactly. Interesting, okay. I would imagine some system of splitters too to keep that curve in line. Uh, yes, yeah, behind the blades, it's usually splitters. You can see the kind of conveyor belt down there move on the board through the, through the center panel. Under the floor, all of the waste here comes out. It gets put into this uh, little section here, and it goes under the floor, travels all the way out of the uh, warehouse, straight into a chipper. Waste never has to be uh, worried about. That's so. And then on the other side of this, we'll get into like, some more of the molding chop saw. So let's jump over to the other side of this and we'll show you through that process. And this is kind of our sanding cell. We got a straight line saw over on the far side. Chop saws over here, automatic chop saw that can uh, we can mark on a board how far we want to cut and the machine will automatically cut it in certain lengths and sort it down the end. Then it goes straight into these sanders. We got two 48 inch wide sanders. Uh, we can do anything from little tiny strips up to the big like the walnut slabs we saw out front, we run those through here, get both faces nice and clean. And so we produce a lot of in-house molding and custom moldings for our customers. We've got 400,000 lineal feet in stock right now. We can produce anything from little tiny scribes up to like 10 inch wide flooring boards. Kind of a one piece flow. So lumber comes out here, can go through the molder into the sanding cell on the other side here, and we just keep the products moving. For the molder side of things, it seems like you guys are doing a lot of linear feet of molding. Is all of that custom? Is there things you can buy off the shelf? Like what's different between this and Home Depot? Can I come in and get a custom profile? And is this a, a big portion of the business? It's a good part of the business. Uh, of course, our main business is lumber and sheet stock but this is just an added value section that we have. We do have stock moldings. We have a stock molding guide on our website. Our most popular profiles we keep in stock all the time, ready to ship. A bunch of different species. I create a lot of custom moldings. People bring in little samples that, to match their Victorian house. A lot of like uh, little pieces that were done by hand with very strange angles and stuff, and I can recreate those. And we'll make brand new knives and we'll cut them right here and set them off to our customers ready to go. And are you making those knife profiles in-house? Yes. Cool. Yes, so I make those in-house myself. And we have a cutting room back here that I can actually show you some of the cutting heads if you'd like to see some of the different profiles. And yeah, we make, we've got over, I think 4,000 different custom profiles that we have available. Can I pull this out? It's heavy and it's sharp, so be careful. All right, talking to the mic for this one. <laughs> sure. So this is one of our uh, cutter heads that we use for uh, make our S4S. So I think this one's set up for an eight inch head that goes on our molding machine. We can custom make our own molding profiles. And this is just a few of the ones that we got ready to go right this minute. So what dictates uh, this? these are straight knives yes. uh, versus, I would think that something carbide in a helical pattern would produce something that has a little less tear out, especially I saw a lot of your molding a lot of your trim is gonna be varying grains and directions. So how do you get past that? Keeping everything really sharp? Super sharp, very fast. And these machines are very accurate. They're winding machines from Germany. They're known for being the best motor machines in the industry. <laughs> Except for that one. That one's not very sharp anymore. Sorry. I'll take a pick at it. Yeah, like over here, we got some of the tongue and groove ready for some of the form profiles. And this machine right here is the machine that sharpens all our knives. It's very cool. I can't believe I just chipped out some carbide. <laughs> okay, get invited. Special template making program that, uh, oh, what would you call that? You know, types of machines that follow a guide. Like a copy? Yes, it's kind of like that when we're uh, grinding the knives and sharpening the knives. So we use a plastic template uh, on the, uh, that translates uh, the profile to the molder head uh, so we can grind the, the knives to fit into the molder head. Amazing, so this is doing it by feel. You got it. That's an art. It is, it very much is. And we have some special machines that let us zoom in super close and make sure all the tolerances are correct. Uh, we keep all our tolerances within, uh, I think it's eight thousandths wow. of an inch. Cool. Yeah, it is hot here. Yeah. 
very cool. All right, let's step over here. Before the noise gets too... Uh, yeah, yeah, yep. We were just on the other side of these sanders. These are the 40-inch sanders over here. And I really like how this workflow is uh, looking and kind of moving through the warehouse. The concept is called a one-piece floor. We try to keep everything in a single line so we don't have to jump positions, move it to different parts of the warehouse. We want everything in a continuous flow. So we come down through the sanders here and go through the sort into the chop saw over here. We have an automatic chop saw that can cut to specific lengths. Uh, that we preset and then we'll kick them out in the different bins for the different lengths that we need. I see a lot of really big ducting coming off of all of this. Uh, oh, yeah. Is the dust collector like a grizzly or are you running something a little bit bigger? Uh, it's a big massive unit on the outside of the building that we dump into semi-truck trailers. So all the chip goes through there. Yeah, you can see all the duct work up here. We've done a lot of work with uh, energy management, making sure that we don't have any leaks, sure. that the sections that we need are open when they're open and closed when we don't need them. As you can see, there's not a lot of dust around. There's the, the sander, there's the rip saw, there's the uh, straight line ripper, we've got the automatic chop saw. There's a lot of machinery right here uh, feeding a lot of different material. Yeah. Uh, it must take a, an army of people to run this section. Uh, that's one thing about the one piece floors. We try to keep everything streamlined in a single line. It's like the sanding cell only takes a couple of guys. Two guys. Two guys to run the whole sanding cell. Keep everything moving through from the start to the final finished standard product. That's amazing. This seems like a lot of material processing. We're gonna need to designate these to certain parts, I would imagine. Okay. So let's move on to the next section. What are all these piles of perfects? ripped and uh, trimmed, lengthened, uh, somewhere between three foot, two foot, and three foot. A lot of these are getting ready for our glue up panels. So it comes through the chop saw, cut to the specific length and width that we're looking for, and ready to go right into the glue room. So if I'm a cabinet shop, I need to do, I don't know, 400 doors for a job. So are you gluing up the panels and profiling them? Can I, I do a lot of glue up panels, and that way we can keep them uh, nice and flat and ready to go for our customers who are making the face frames, making the doors. Uh, we do make some five piece doors and slab doors here, but a lot of these we get ready for the customer, get that panel ready to go, ready to turn into the door. All right, so we've just come from the ripping, the molding, the all of the processing. Uh, some of this gets turned into tables and panels. And tell us a little bit about this room, these contraptions behind us. Is this uh, some kind of sexual torture device or? <laughs> glue racks. We okay. Got two specialized glue racks. Makes more sense. Uh, automatic clamping. Uh, so we have an automatic glue line. We're custom gluing, like you said, tabletop panels, uh, different edge grains and uh, end grain panels and all that kind of stuff. We have the automatic clamp, so it doesn't take a guy sitting there clamping the thing. So we get the exact pressure we need. And you can see it just cycles through so that we can have, you know, dozens and dozens of uh, panels cooling up and drying all at the same time. Wow. The glue up. As yeah. usual, I don't have much to say about the glue up portion. <laughs> yeah. oh. uh, we're making stuff, little stuff, bigger stuff, by the way of glue. Oh, what kind of glue do you use? Uh, it's a special, uh, Blend of herbs and spices, KFC glue. <laughs> we got bowling alley glue. You know. Type on one, two. EVA. It does depend on the job. Some species do better on different types of glue. Okay, so I was at Creative Woodworking and they said that they were having failures with pipe on two and walnut. Have you found similar and do you use something different? I'll get that for you. We'll find that out. Find that out. Coming up next. So yeah. And we've got to blur all of this out because it's very secret and uh, government spy stuff. I don't know, you know, <laughs> yeah. politicians are really into woodworking. Over here, we've got a big, bad MF CNC. It's a CNC. You can do two CNC jobs at the same time. Four? Two, 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 two axes. Two heads at the same time. Two axes would be dual head, top and side, and grill tops. Oh, okay. So we're coming at it from, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Coming at it from two angles. I think that's right. All right. I don't know anything about CNC yet. And it's got automatic heads. It can switch the heads automatically so we don't have to sit there with the chuck and uh, the vacuum table. Yeah. Yep. This appears to be the return for dust collection. Uh, that's part of the climate control system in this room because we want to keep this room a little higher temperature for the glue setup. You got it. Are they doing any kind of grain matching as they glue these panels up? 
but we will do our best to um, get that pleasing match so that when you come and pick up the top of your fork, it's going to be exactly what you want. Cool. What if it's not? We'll do it again. Cool. <laughs> Running anything today? Oh, I just want to try to run that guy. Yeah. Okay. Just interesting. What's that? I'm trying to take a video of. Doing a video of all the different machines. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, one thing I wanted to ask over there, but it was a little noisy, is uh, are, are these going to be builders, trim carpenters? Are we looking at a lot of cabinet shops? How many of which? Uh, is it kind of all over the board or is there percentages? Roughly? Um, it feels kind of all over the board. We do a lot of big the cabinet shops. Um, everybody from, you know, you coming in, needing a few boards for your next project to the big cabinet shop that needs thousands of board feet. Ready to go. All right, I'm gonna do some movie magic here uh, in <laughs> post. <laughs> Are you rolling? This is four quarter, which means about one inch. Uh, we typically plane that down and uh, finished piece is gonna be somewhere around three quarter, 13 16, something around that. Usually uh, 15 16. 15 16. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right here, we've got roughly one board foot. I'm curious. First of all, how big is this facility? No, oh, tens of thousands of square feet. I've got to get that number for you. In this large of a facility, how many of these board feet are there? Uh, on hand today, we have 1.2 million board feet. That is a lot of feet. That is all the feet. One point, I can't even fathom what that looks like. I guess it looks yeah. like this. Just a little. You got it. Local? Local and national. Okay, interesting. And how many locations does Hardwood Industries have across the nation? Uh, we have nine in the Pacific Northwest. Okay. While we're on that topic, I'm a nobody and I do zero volume, but you guys treat me amazing. Uh, does Can anybody come off the street? 10 board feet versus 10,000, what, what kind of customer are you serving on a day-to-day? -day? All over the place? You got it. Perfect. So we will take the big cabinet shop, we will take the mom and pop guy doing their hobby on the weekend. Cool. Uh, speaking of panels, let's go check out what a stack of plywood looks like. <laughs> Stop to my tracks here because I see at least one of my favorites. Uh, this is a lot of walnut. Oregon is kind of known for their badass walnut. I would assume all this is Oregon, right? Most of it's from the east. 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 This is not Oregon walnut. The walnut farms are on the east. Interesting. So if you want a lot of walnut, you gotta go east. Do you know where the Oregon walnut goes? Good question. A lot of it is uh, used more decorative. And by, smaller by guys jobs. like me? Yes. Veneer? I heard a rumor that a good percentage of the beautiful Oregon walnut, which is actually a hybridization between the Eastern walnut here, which has a lot more of the purpley gray tones. A the more uh, mineral. Yeah. yeah. California is known for Clara walnut. Oregon is actually a hybridization between those two. So you get a lot of the like, purples and greens and kind of funky wild colors. I did hear down the rumor mill, I don't know if this is actually true, that a lot of our really pretty walnut is actually exported to places like Japan. Uh, that is one of the industries that, yes, Oregon walnut yeah, ships overseas. Bummer, but interesting. Bummer, and again, you know, if we get cabinet shots looking for a lot of it, a lot of Oregon walnuts, hard to come by. Sure. So, that's why it's it grows plentiful in the east, and that's where we get a lot of our uh, walnut stock from. Uh, per board footage, do you know, like, a, are you guys making 50% margin, or is this a dollar a board foot or 50 cents a board foot? How does that work? Uh, it goes by species, uh, depends on the grade. Give me, give me an idea. Big general numbers, business-wise. We all know you guys are a business, you have to make money. Um, we're aware that there are margins in business and you would not be here without them. Uh, you know, if I was in sales, I could tell you that. But we'll ask Gil. You got it. Cool. <laughs> See me rolling. Cool. Sweet. 1.2 million board feet of lumber in here. How many sheets of plywood do we have? Yes. Sheet goods? Over 57,000 sheet goods in stock. Wow. Do you know what the cost of all of that inventory is? 
Oh, but that is a staggering figure. Uh, how often does inventory turn over here? Um, you know, it does kind of range between sure. species and sheets. Um, some of it is sold before it even comes off the chain. Um, some of it can take you know, a few months, depending on how often uh, people need them. We try and keep the high volume stuff in stock ready to go. And if we see something moving more often, we'll try and bring it in some more. If something's moving a little slower, we'll ease off on that. So typically an inventory rich business is gonna have to stop once a year and count everything and make sure their all of their counts are good. Do you guys shut down for a week and come through and have somebody? Uh, you know, we used to do it in a day. We take a weekend, we take a Saturday and do that. Amazing. But now we're tracking it a lot more closer than we used to that uh, we have a pretty good idea of what, yeah. We got automatic lights. Uh, we have a pretty good idea of uh, every stick of lumber that we got in stock. Tell us about She Goods. Uh, we've got everything from particle board MDF to your high end, high gloss, uh, super matte that people are using now in a lot of uh, modern kitchens and furniture in their houses. Do you also sell the nearby the sheet? Uh, we do. We keep a lot of that over in our CSD department. Uh, we keep the stuff with, you know, the, the adhesive back, the plane. Uh, we've got a lot of different species and uh, grades of whatever in the veneers. Is the veneer cut in house? Uh, no. Veneers. Yeah, um, that's where all I the guess, secrets are kept. Yeah. I guess one other thing we could mention is our S4S we run through our molder. What's S4S mean for the those? Surfaced four sides. Every side's going to be nice and trimmed and square. Cool. Uh, we run that through our molder so that we make sure everything is Perfect. Tits. Those, exactly. Tits. Exactly. We want that perfect edge when you're looking for hardwood industries S4S. All right. Let's go, yeah, check out some of the S4S stuff you can come buy off the street. Ready to go. You mentioned the glue ups. Some of our bigger, larger S4S can have a few different staves in it. But using that humidity control, using our our molder cut edges, we keep those edges perfectly flush with a perfect glue on. All right, this is the public facing will call where you can come in and grab your S4S. Uh, I was curious, as bunks come in, obviously not all of it is going to be the grade that it is and some's gonna be a little fancier than others. So yeah. if we've got bird's eye maple or you know quilted, if we've got really high quality figure, is that going into bunks or do you sort that out along the way and it's throw it out here? sorted into its own bunk. Okay. So we will sort that high end bird's eye maple. Uh, we have a couple mid grades uh, bird's eye maple as well. And then, yeah, we will surface it, find the nice boards, and we will, uh, our uh, exotic inventory comes straight from our regular inventory. Uh, okay. So if I need 200 board feet of quilted maple, you got that? We have it or we can get it. All right, is there anything else that uh, you'd like to tell the millions of people watching? <laughs> you got it. Um, <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry, I'm getting a little dry mouth here. Unacceptable. Yeah. Get your shit together. <laughs> Try it, man. <laughs> Prices right there. You can see what we got on sale that day. This changes quite often. So if you want to see these certain sale items, come stop on by. Cool. Well, thanks, Nick, for showing us around. I appreciate it. This has been right. an awesome tour. I think this is an amazing facility, and yeah. I hope everybody at home. I uh, enjoyed this as well. I hope so too. Come stop by and uh, I hope I got all my facts right. So, Wasn't that an interesting facility? If you thought so, give it a thumb and let me know what you thought down in the comments below. And don't forget to check out Fiverr for 10% off your freelancer needs with code Sawyer Design using the link down in the description. If you need lumber, as for Gil, mention my name for the best pricing and I will leave more info and contacts down below. Finally, thanks Hardwood Industries for having us out and thank you for watching. Consider subscribing if you want to see more like this and the furniture that all of this lumber becomes. I'm Nick, and we'll catch you on the next one. Peace.